My name is Jonathan Parks, and welcome to Jonathan's Nature Craft. I must inform you that I do not live in this house by myself, but live here with other people. Sometimes other members of the household may have to walk through areas where I might be recording with other family members on the phone. If you hear any noise like that, please feel free to disregard. We are doing our best to get noise-canceling equipment, which may at least keep you from hearing exactly what is being said. Thank you for considering. Well, I'll tell you all that this was just a little moment. I decided to come back on here and just kind of do a little easy carving demonstration because, you know, we've been doing these videos where I've painted these dogs and traced on these angels, but it's about time we kind of got back to doing a little carving, and I'd like to share with you all something about these whale blanks I have, and... What you're going to see here is that it just so happened that sometime before I made some little whales that were actually made from leftover scraps of cherry. And the story was that I had made these bears in a certain shape. And what was left of the saw scrap after sawing out the blank for those special bears was what ended up being the shape for those whales. And I carved the whales from it because they were there and sold a couple of them. And I was at an event just this past summer where considering the fact that that was a lady I used to go to church with who purchased one of the cherry whales and another lady who still goes to that same church where I don't go to anymore who happened to know that particular lady and see that she had one, asked me if I had any more. So what I'll say is that I told her the story about how that those were just from scraps and probably not something I'd make a whole lot more of, but one day I decided since I needed something to do with all my extra wood, including that big piece of guanacosti that I bought, I decided a good thing to carve out of it would be a couple of shapes for whales and tried to make the best of the scrap from my memory the best way I could. So that was the way that that turned out and I decided to kind of draw it out and place them on the little board and saw them out to make them just a good enough shape and that is what I came up with so we're gonna start trying to do a little demo on as to how we carve them now and I'd say kinda maybe put this back just a little more so you can see a little bit more of the angle from which I'm doing it and kind of try to just do this very thing. Try to, I say, maybe carve along here and this would just be probably a good way to start out to test the knife, but Probably not the best place to start carving because once the tail becomes too thin and you have to carve the rest of the body, you might kind of cause things to break a little bit. So it might be a good idea to kind of start a little bit more further up, maybe in the front of the body, in the front of the face or something like that. Try to put a little extra carving time into what we have and what we do here. I say that perhaps this little knife I got here isn't the best one to have. It kind of has a little bit of a thick blade on it, but these knives have just been sharpened, so decided to sharpen them before doing this video and think that this is one of those things where I'd like to demonstrate what I do. See, 
we're coming this way a little longer, a little further to kind of make it out how the head and face ought to be and see. As for this little whale, it's going to be kind of a good piece of work when it all comes out. I tell you, and one thing I used to carve were little statues of Jonah and the whale. You probably remember that story from the Bible. It was about the prophet Jonah. He was a minor prophet in the minor prophet section of the Old Testament, and the Lord told Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach, to preach to the Ninevite people so that they would repent because they were all there in idol worship and things and then Jonah refused I mean these people they were his enemies he wanted to see his enemies destroyed Nineveh was the capital of Assyria which and Assyria was the enemy of Israel Jonah was from the land of Israel the land which was God's people in the time of the Old Testament so it was just one of those things where he didn't want to go to Nineveh to preach so he got on a boat and tried to flee to Tarshish Spain and then a big storm came and other people were on the boat with him casting lots praying to their own gods trying to get the storm to stop and they couldn't do it it was like they knew that the the lots turned to Jonah and he was asleep they woke him up said how can you think of sleeping at a time like this so they asked him who is your God I'll tell you all that this is a place where we can kind of come along on the little tail here now make a little space to go about this he said, I worship the God of Israel. He said, pray to your God that he may stop the storm. And, of course, rather than do it, he said, I am the cause for this. Throw me overboard into the sea. So, that's what he requested. He requested to be thrown overboard into the sea. And, though we also know for one thing that tradition tells us that it was a whale, but the Bible says that it was a big fish that swallowed Jonah you know of course a whale is not a fish it is a mammal but that's the kind of thing where from what we see in this it could a whale could have been considered a fish in those days because people didn't study animals all that much so it's probably just how things worked there I'd say we got this much done on this one try to come down here take care of it this way try to remove a little bit more from the back now and try to trim it out better so when Jonah was thrown overboard the seas calmed the storm calmed and the boat sailed just right but then he was swallowed by the big fish and the Bible says he spent three days and three nights in the belly of the fish and he prayed a prayer well anyway now we're probably going to kind of try to work on this other one a little bit try to keep both of these together in the video but I'd like to mention that as he was praying that prayer some of the verses he prayed according to that prayer they came out of the book of Psalms so in those days people probably memorized scripture very well because everybody didn't have their own copy of the word back then so they memorized it to pray it and you know the Psalms was considered a book of prayers back then so he prayed his prayer and then three days and three nights later the big fish spit him out on Nineveh land and God said to Jonah go into Nineveh and 
preach the word, gave Jonah just the words he to say. The original Hebrew for the words he said was only in five Hebrew words in the original, but in our translation it is, yet 40 days and Nineveh will be destroyed. So the people all repented, they got rid of their idols, they worshiped the God of Israel, and finally, that was when God said, Jonah, see these people, they are no longer your enemies. And at the end of that day, Jonah slept under a vine and said, and just wondered, God, why did you not destroy them? Why did you send me to preach to them? And just kind of told them simple things about people and how, you know, he wanted them to repent. He loved the people of Nineveh like he did the people of Israel. And that was where finally, as he laid down to sleep, a worm ate the vine that he rested under. The Lord asked, the Joan asked the Lord, why did you let the worm eat the vine? And he said, are not these people more important to you than a vine? And... You know, it's kind of like how, of all other things I've read in places, you know, there's just two prophecies after Jonah in the Bible is the prophecy of Nahum. And the prophecy of Nahum is about the destruction of Nineveh, which took place years later. And that was just one of the things that I learn of all things and it's kind of like how there was a certain book off of my grandfather's old shelf that I once read it was about the 12 minor prophets and there was a certain line in that book where the author kind of mentions that how that Hosea was like the hometown prophet but Jonah was the missionary prophet just like in our days, we have hometown pastors and missionary pastors and preachers and evangelists and the things of all things. I think I'm going to come along this one, kind of take the same little steps along here, try to carve out a little more. And makes me also think when I was a kid, I used to read about mammals and all this stuff about how even the mammals that lived in water could only breathe air and I said my mom it seems like every mammal cannot breathe underwater except whales she'd tell me oh even whales have to come to the surface to breathe and in reality they have those little holes in the top of their head that they breathe out of and I've even learned to that matter that it's Kind of like how dolphins are kind of closely related to whales and belugas and porpoises and how that they too sort of have that little thing on the top of their head with which they breathe. You know, in all the different stories we've heard. About the different ways creatures have of things. And I tell you, and one thing I've even read about was how that dolphin, for example, they prey on tuna. So when fishermen are looking for tuna, they follow the dolphin in the ocean and they is and they follow the dolphin to catch the tuna and they drop the net down on the tuna. But the issue all too often is that sometimes the net ends up being dropped on top of the dolphin so it can't escape and can't get to the surface to breathe and it drowns. So with little work that's come along, I'd like to say that 
there's going to be a little more kind of have to get rid of these little things on the tail and scrape up a little bit of a little work out of this and kind of have a little ways to make the little straight design go its best way oh 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 and I tell you all that this is kind of like a little crazy type of work I tell you all and all the ways things get silly when you're young and they kind of get even crazier when you're older I share a lot to you all I've been taking this art class lately over at the Methodist Church it just started last night and I enjoyed the first night of it we all got to introduce each other talk to each other shared a little bit of my work and this lady who was leading the group she's a painter and just kind of shared with us some things about how God is the creator and all the ways we have that we can be creative and you know how some people don't feel very creative and she always encourages them and tells them yes you are I say I say that um you know some people don't realize it everybody kind of is in their own way you know and sure that we all kind of have ways we'd like to have little things we all kind of see things in other people that we all wish we could have and wish we could do but there's just so many things we all too often do not notice in ourselves and sometimes there are things we kind of have to learn to see in ourselves like there are the things we see in others and I'd say that there's a lot of ways to be crafty in life and all that you have and all that you do and all the things people see and hear that you do and all the things they could tell you how they just so much wish they could do and I say as we come along this project we're kind of carving things out a little better and this is just kind of the work that we see come out in a little critter that shall make a good way to show us a little light and character and love for ourselves you know sometimes just sometimes you know we often kind of overlook the good in ourselves and sometimes we look down on ourselves and other times we can have our little moments when we can think a little highly of ourselves you know sometimes just sometimes there gets to be the moments in life when we also learn that God is good to us the creator of the earth created man in his own image just like we studied about last night and all the creatures in the sea created us all from the dust I say it's just kind of like how with all the briars and thistles and thorns and the roses he created it's all stuff that happened just because we had sin in us and brought a little faith and joy to us I say that this is just kind of a little work the way it comes along and as soon as I finish this video I'm going to need to go up and get my laundry out of the dryer it's probably just finished up because I heard it buzz a little while ago but I say I say for all the work we have in our kingdom I'd say that there's a lot of greatness in this world we see it every day as we worship the creator and things you know 
And God is good. He creates all people and all things. And sometimes, just sometimes, we all learn the things by which we appreciate and love and honor and each other. I say that I appreciate the fact that you come on, give me a chance to kind of show you all some little things. Probably these things won't take long to carve. They don't look like they're going to be a lot of work, especially since this wood is so soft. But I say for the moment that you all are good. You all are faithful and stuff and appreciate your coming on. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I hope to see you in the next video. Stay tuned.